it was because I was an inconvenient wife. And the intent of my torture was to eliminate me in a clean and tidy fashion. And the means were very convenient. One of my in-laws worked for uh, the CIA and FBI and was also part of the State Department. So the technology was very easy to get hold of. My electronic harassment started in March of 1997. And it, um, it triggered doubts of uncontrollable crime which had no cause. It was very confusing. I felt perhaps well, maybe I was ill, so I went to my doctor and she sent me on to a psychiatrist which opened up a pharmaceutical can of worms. And I have since found out that this is par for the courts for targeted individuals. And um, in tandem to this, I was subject to gaslight. Uh, gaslighting is the um, psychological abuse in which false information is given to the victim so that they question their perceptions, their memory, and even their sanity. I knew something was dreadfully wrong, but I didn't realize the danger I was in. Uh, as time uh, went on and the abuse increased and fatigue would descend upon me, I was plagued with bloody nose. Um, my uh, blood vessels in my eyes would break, and I started hearing voices. Now, mind you, these voices only came at a particular time of day in only one part of the house. But uh, the brain is the one organ of the body that will self-diagnose. And so I phoned my psychiatrist, because I fear schizophrenia. He said, there's no way you can be schizophrenic. Um, but come in and I'll do some blood tests. That night he phoned me and he said, the tests are back. Your thyroid has been destroyed. Can you speak up just a little? Yeah. Uh, the cruelty within my marriage continued, and I, I filed for divorce. And now all the stops were pulled out. And my children were artfully brainwashed and suffered from parental alienation syndrome. This was pointed out by a therapist. And what I thought was just normal um, teenage anger and rebellion was uh, really something else. And she feared for their, uh, that they would be harmed forever because of this. I was subjected to harassing phone calls. Uh, the, the lines were tapped, and I would find cryptic notes within the house alluding to my death. Um, uh, my food was tampered with. And finally, three doctors took me aside and said, just walk away from the marriage, ask for nothing, your life is in danger. Now, after the uh, divorce, I was uh, awarded spousal support, and uh, that's when all hell broke loose. The lines were bugged again, the cell phones were bugged, my health deteriorated, my children were filled with hatred. I was in such despair that I contemplated suicide. And in this despair, I phoned the suicide prevention line, and the counselor there listened quietly to my story and then responded with, uh, he couldn't think of any good reason why I shouldn't commit suicide. <laughs> so um, it was his response, uh, ironically, that uh, validated my misery. And because of that, I started to fight back. And I got a book contract and I moved to another state. But my, I was still the object of torment. I was shadowed, trailed, I was drugged back to court. My children were subpoenaed by my husband to testify against me and they were threatened with jail if they didn't do this. The uh, stalking uh, became quite irksome. And at one point, I phoned 911. Now, I live in a very small town. We have two stoplights. And it was lunchtime. And when I did phone, I got a recording that said, your call is important to us. Please leave your name and number. Um, uh, things did calm down after I remarried. And uh, it was only recently, and in retrospect, I realized what had happened to me. And when I've done research, now that I've started researching what it was I was subjected to, the harassment has continued. Uh, but William Shakespeare said, sweet, uh, sweet are the uh, uses of adversity. And so now I'm speaking out 
and I am telling my story, and I'm going to be writing about it. So, you're getting it back.